Hey, welcome back. So let's look at social engineering. Now, like I had said earlier, uh, hacking does not simply involve hacking into computer systems. So for example, if I want to hack into a computer, my friend's computer, so I could do it in two ways. The first one is I could just go and use brute force and try to hack it while he's on the internet. Or I could simply just go there and try to trick him into giving me his password. I can tell him, oh, I need your password for this and that, and then I get the password. So obviously, if I can get him to give me my his password, that is much simpler and much easier than trying to actually get it through brute force from computer to computer. So this is where social engineering comes from. So this is the act of persuading somebody to give you the information, their confidential information uh, themselves, and then you hack their account that way. So that's what social engineering, <clears throat> excuse me, is all about when it comes to computer hacking. So to prevent, uh, nobody is actually safe from social engineering because somebody can target you regardless who you are. They can try to get information from you. So you may think you can't divulge such information, but sometimes you give away the information unwillingly. So for example, if you must make sure that you keep confidential information hidden, there are people who are lazy at remembering passwords, so they're going to put the password on a sticker on their computer maybe. So that is a very bad practice because no matter how secure your website or your admin system is, if you just give away the password to somebody, then all that security is for nothing. So this is why it's important to keep confidential information hidden. Now, the second thing is your trash is very important because when somebody is trying to hack your system, they may come to your offices physically and then they wait for the trash to come out from your office because in that trash bag sometimes you can throw in very interesting information maybe there's a phone bill in there there's uh, uh, something you bought online those lists of information can have email addresses uh, passwords in there sometimes so that can be very valuable information to a hacker so also keep note not to put confidential information in the bin then somebody could use a key logger. Now a key logger is something like, uh, it's a piece of software that is used to, when somebody plugs that software or loads the software into your computer, it will keep all the keys that you are actually clicking on the, on the keyboard. So it will log every key that you press. So even when you go to a website, it will write what website you are on and then what you are typing so it will obviously get your email and password for example to your facebook account so if i want to get uh, i want to get information uh, from my friend or somebody i know i can just go there talk to them and install a keylogger or i can send the keylogger software over email so be careful when opening uh, email addresses i think i have a link to a Keylogger. So this is like a keylogger here. It says advanced keylogger. So once you download this software, obviously I think this is a paid software. So once you download this, you can install it on somebody's computer and they will actually not know it exists. Then what it will be doing is it's going to send you keystroke. It says it right here. Invisibly records keystrokes and sends them via email. It sends them to you via email. So you receive everything they are doing. So this is one way that hackers will get uh, information from you. So to prevent this, you have to be careful who you give access to your computer. And also you have to be careful what emails you open. Now, uh, sometimes what people do is they get publicly available information on social media. So if you're on social media and you have your contact information there, you have where you live, you have the city and town, somebody will just go to your social website, open the page there, and then they'll look at all that information. And then what, would, what they would do is they'll go to try and log into your account, and then they'll be asked those questions like, uh, 
where was your mother born where do you live what time what town what dog what's the name of your dog your favorite dog now that information usually is public on social media maybe you have photos of your dog and there's your your dog's name there or something like that so when those questions are asked to re when resetting your password the person can just go to your social media and check all the publicly available information and use that to actually activate your social media account and steal it from you so that has been done many times so to avoid that make sure you have two-step verification on your systems okay whatever systems you have to put two-step verification there to ensure that somebody cannot hack you in that way so also when uh, it comes to password reset security questions this i have already covered in here uh, people can use this information from here from your social media to actually uh, go through that so you may have a website where uh, your users or you as the admin or one of your admins forgets their password and then they try to reset you have a system which asks them security questions so maybe somebody would have gone to their social media and then got that information and came back and actually used it on them and then they gain access or admin access to your website so that is something to be taken into consideration and implement two-step uh, verification if possible where an, an SMS is sent to your phone to verify that it's you a code with an an SMS with a code to verify that it's actually you then finally we're going to look at phishing here so phishing is the act of uh, giving you the wrong form to fill in a fake form to fill in and phishing out your information so for example let's say you're trying to log into a Facebook but instead I give you a link to Facebook that looks kind of like Facebook maybe in an email maybe I'll send you an email once I get your email address somehow maybe I get it from your social media I'll go and send you an email and in the email I'm just going to say maybe look at look at this post maybe look at this post and then I put a link that looks like it's a Facebook link I'll say face and then instead of that maybe it's like this Dot com so when you're looking at this it may not look apparent that this is not actually Facebook it may be something else because of that V there but you may not pay that much attention and just click on that thing and then you are taken to a form where you fill in your login details you you fill in your username and password there and then what it does is that it refreshes gets that information sends it via email to the hacker and then sends you back to Facebook to log in so an example here would be let's say for example I have I belong to this bank this is a Citibank here right now if I'm a hacker and I want to get information from the visitors of this bank all I need to do is just go online there are tools like this one like website copier online it's a free tool so all I have to do now is just copy the URL of the Citibank and put it in here and then just select the free version just one page here I am not a robot and then once that is done I just click download so what this does is it makes a copy of the website okay so it's going to finish its downloading here but I already got a copy here so I can show you uh, real quickly without having to wait for the download so it gives you a folder like this where you everything is there the CSS the JavaScript the images but of course the PHP or the backend isn't in this but that doesn't really matter so if I open this in my uh, so you see here it's asking me to download the archive now look at this this is the copied version of the website it looks exactly like the original which is here look at that it may not look exactly but it's almost there the only thing missing maybe a few images here and there but I can always add those in so this will be will look like the bank you know for somebody who is unsuspecting so it's very important that you check your URL and make sure that this is the correct website you are logging into every time you're logging in and you are sending confidential information 
always double check the URL because here what I would do is the hacker will simply create a JavaScript uh, code to simply collect your data here and send it via email to him. And then once you try to sign in or log in, you'll just be redirected to the actual website. Then you'll be surprised that you are being asked to log in twice, not knowing that the first time was a fake form and this is the real one here. So it's not always this obvious. For you to uh, protect yourself from this, just always check the URL, make sure it's correct. Sometimes these hackers will send you emails. For example, I personally received an email here. Uh, I have a Facebook page, okay? So I, I have a Facebook page with uh, quite a significant following and these guys wanted to uh, to hack into that Facebook page. So they just sent me this email pretending to be this company, which is Board Panda. This is a very well-known company, right? But for me, because I'm aware of such things, the moment I looked at the email address, you see here it says Board Panda Company, but then there's a number here, there's 287. You don't expect that from this company. So that's one flag there to tell you that this is a possible hack. So. Then the second thing is it's a Gmail account, so it's at Gmail. So when a company is legitimate, they don't use a Gmail account. It's going to be at the company name.com. So it'll be maybe info at company name.com. So these are things you should be looking for and careful to notice before you divulge, divulge your information. So these guys, for example, were saying, uh, we want to pay you to put ads on your Facebook page and we'll be paying you $2,400 per advert. So I was like, okay, that sounds fine. But I knew from the beginning that this is a fake thing, but I played along just to see how far they go. And I wanted to see what they're going to do and how they're going to gain access to my system. So they gave me a link and I went to that link. I saw what they were doing. They were trying to uh, connect two pages together and then gain admin access from there and remove me as admin. And then they get over, they take over the page. So all this I'm showing you here is just to prove to you that uh, hacking is not always directed directly at your website or trying to do a brute force attack. It starts with social engineering where they try to persuade you to give them the access yourself. The most famous uh, hacker when, when he was caught, obviously, said uh, the 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 most successful way he managed to hack people was by getting picking picking up the phone and calling them and pretending to be somebody they can trust for example the bank manager or somebody just doing some research or something like that and then they gave him the information themselves so be careful when you have confidential information to hide not to fall trap to these phishing attacks or social engineering in general. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.